Hello and welcome to the nave. It is so great to have you with us today. Wherever or whenever you're joining us, you are so welcome. Coming up in our service today, we're going to start with a time of sung worship as we bring our praise to God. Then I'm going to hand over to Liz as we continue our sermon series on the fruit of the Spirit. And today's topic is kindness. And then finally, we're going to finish with a time of reflective prayer and worship. But before we get into any of that, let's spend some time now coming into God's presence knowing his Holy Spirit with us, asking forgiveness for our sins and knowing his grace and mercy in our life. Let's pray. Father, maker of heaven and earth, we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words and in our actions and have failed to do the things that we should have done. Lord, we are sorry and we truly repent of our sins. Thank you for your great grace and mercy that overflows into our lives. Thank you that when you forgive us, we are washed whiter than snow and we can come so freely into your presence. Lord, would you show us your presence with us now? Fill us with the power of your spirit. Change our hearts towards you, Lord. Soften them and break them for the things that break your heart as you transform us into your likeness, we pray. Help us to go out into this week and walk as children of light in this world, sharing your love. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. with 
love himself His perfect spotless righteousness A reading from the book of 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 9. David asked, Is there anyone still left in the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of Saul's household named Ziba. They called him to appear before David and the king said to him, Are you Ziba? Your servant, he replied. The king asked, is there no one still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, There is still a son of Jonathan. He is crippled in both feet. Where is he? the king asked. Ziba answered, He is at the house of Machia, son of Amiel, in Lodibar. So the king of David had him brought from Lodibar, from the house of Machia, son of Amiel, when Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honour. David said, Mephibosheth, your servant, he replied. Don't be afraid, David said to him, for I surely will show you the kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. I've told you this story before, I know, but I like it, so I'm going to share it with you again. A couple of years ago, our youngest son came home from school one day, and uh, in class they'd obviously been talking about kindness and about doing good things for one another, and he said to me, he said, Mam, Mam, he says, do you know, he says, we've all got a bucket, and it's a kindness bucket, and every time you do something good and kind for someone else, he said, we fill up their bucket a little bit. And he said, and if we do something nasty or unkind, well, we tip out a little bit from their bucket. And all we've got to do is we've got to choose if we're going to be a bucket filler or a bucket tipper. And, but you know, I love this idea of uh, kindness being lots of little things that we can do for one another. It's a really nice image. And I think often when it comes to, to kindness, we can think that it is pretty simple and easy. You know, it's not like some of those really big fruits of the Spirit. It's not like thinking about joy in the face of suffering or having to think about patience like Kai talked about last week. Kindness, well, kindness is, is just that little bit easier, isn't it? You know, we can tell a few nice stories about kindness buckets and random acts of kindness like smiling at strangers and giving people unexpected gifts and we're good to go. And I guess everyday kindness like those things is lovely and it's nice and it makes us feel good about ourselves but that kind of kindness i think is more of a worldly kindness than it is a spiritual kindness and so if you were expecting the fluffy nicey nicey type of kindness tonight then i am sorry because you're about to be really disappointed 
because tonight we are looking at kindness as fruit of the Spirit. Kindness that reflects the image of God. And that kind of kindness is hard and it's gritty and it's challenging, but it also grows the kingdom. Kindness as a spiritual fruit isn't always easy, but as our reading tonight shows us, it can be incredibly powerful. You know, I think David's actions tell us a lot about what true kindness really does look like. And first off, I think David's actions show us that kindness endures over time because it is the result of a covenant promise. Some of you will have um, heard tonight's reading before and uh, others perhaps you may never have read it. Some of you will be a little bit familiar with the story of David and Saul and Jonathan. You might remember it from when we studied 1 Samuel a couple of years ago. Others of you won't have a clue what I am stood here talking about and that is okay. But I am gonna catch you up with the story. So there was this guy and he was called Saul and he had a son called Jonathan. who was friends with another guy called David. Now Saul was the king of Israel, but he was a naughty boy and so God said to him, I am taking the kingdom of Israel away from you and I'm going to give it to David, who was from another tribe instead. Now this understandably made Saul quite cross and he did not like David at all. But David and Saul's son Jonathan were friends, best friends in fact. And this makes things a little bit difficult. It's always a bit awkward when your best friend's dad is trying to kill you. But David and Jonathan loved one another and they made a covenant or a promise that they would always be friends and that they would always look out for one another. So fast forward a few years and both Saul and Jonathan are now dead and David is the new king of Israel. And this means that anyone who was from Saul's household is now really scared because in those days it was customary for the new king, David in this case, to nip out and to massacre anyone that was in any way connected to the previous dynasty. And so, so in today's reading, David asks, is there anyone still who is left of the house of Saul? And you'd be forgiven for thinking that he wanted to know this so that he could make sure they were all dead, that he could make sure that he had no enemies left. And yet, and yet he finishes the sentence with, is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? David isn't interested in exacting any kind of revenge on his enemies. He wants to know if there's any part of uh, his friend's family still alive so that he might honour the promise that he made with Jonathan to always show kindness to them. Even though years have gone by, even though that both Saul and Jonathan are now dead, David's first priority is to honour the covenant that he made, to honour the promise to always show kindness, even though potentially it puts himself at risk. You know, anyone who he lets live from Saul's household has potential at some point to rise up against him. And yet, and yet he shows kindness anyway because his kindness isn't just based on feelings, it's based on the promise of a covenant. It's, it's essentially a case of who you know, not what you know. <laughs> I, um, I remember when I first went to the valleys, I remember going into one of the local schools and uh, being looked at with great suspicion when I opened my mouth and my very English accent came out. And it was even more English in those days And you know, after we have this sort of awkward small talk and uh, carried on for a little bit, and this guy suddenly goes, I know who you are, you're married to Chris Chris and Beth's boy. And I said, yeah, yeah. He said, I thought so. He says, come with me, love. He says, we'll look after you. And off we went. You know, his kindness to me that day had absolutely nothing to do with me as a person and everything to do with my family name. Now, Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, 
who if it's okay with you I am just going to call M otherwise we're going to be here all night it's going to take me hours to record it because of all the times I say it wrong so Jonathan's son M is spared not because of who he is per se, but because of who his father was. He is spared because of the covenant between David and his dad. The true kindness that David showed endured over the years. It didn't expire after a certain point because it was the result of a covenant promise. And I think, I think kindness like that the kindness that we show others as a result of a covenant promise. And it's not the covenant promise between David and Jonathan, It's, it's the covenant that exists between us and God. David made his covenant with Jonathan because he wanted to show Jonathan and others the same kindness that God had shown him. You know, on the day that we became a Christian, we entered into a covenant relationship with God. And as we accept God's never-ending love and forgiveness towards us, as we accept our salvation from him, as we, so we promise to follow Christ as his disciples, following in his ways and loving and serving others in his name. And so as we think about kindness as fruit of the Spirit, it cannot be simply kindness in the sense of doing some nice things for other people. It has to be kindness that is born out of the covenant that exists between us and God. It has to be a kindness that endures. David's kindness to M wasn't to give him just one good meal. It was to invite him to eat at his table for his whole life. It was a kindness that brought him into relationship with the king. And as we show kindness to others, it should be born out of our covenant with God and it should be motivated not by our desire to look good, but by the desire that those to whom we show kindness might one day eat at the table of the king and be brought into relationship with him so that one day we might all eat and drink at the king's table in heaven. Now there's a thought. Kindness as a spiritual fruit doesn't come from us being nice. It comes from us being in a covenant relationship with God. And that means it is also a kindness that this world just does not expect. You know, as the new king, David would have been expected to root out and to kill anyone that was connected with Saul's kingdom. And that's what M expected to happen because he's in hiding. After all, he is the grandson of the last king. His dad and his granddad are dead. And so he is the heir of Saul, a very real threat to David's kingdom. And there were still some people who were knocking about that felt that Saul's house should still be the one that reigned over the nation. And so it could well have fallen to M to start the uprising. But of course, this is not what happens. M is found and he is is brought before the king. And as he comes before David, he bows down, probably out of fear. And David says to him, do not be afraid. And I have always been pretty clear on my belief that if somebody says, do not be afraid, you probably need to be very afraid. But David says to him, he says, don't be afraid. I am going to show you kindness for your father's sake. He essentially says it's all going to be okay. And David, in his kindness, does the unexpected. Do you know he had every right to kill him and yet he surprises everyone with his grace and his kindness. And I think in that moment we're we're shown, aren't we, that the fruit of the Spirit and grace often just go hand in hand. Kai talked last week about patience and about part of that of of showing patience was not exacting revenge even when you've got the right to do so and here again we see with kindness showing kindness even in situations where you don't have to grace is is essentially us getting something that we don't deserve and god pours out his grace on us day in day out And as we seek to display the fruit of his spirit, then it's about us showing that grace to others. 
And so often that is unexpected. You know, we live in a society now, don't we, that doesn't expect kindness anymore. We live in a very look out for number one society. When the COVID-19 pandemic first hit, it felt like there was a monumental shift in society for better. You know, suddenly people cared more about others. They put themselves first, the other people first, but the needs of others came first. We stayed at home even when we didn't want to. There was a massive upsurge in donations to places like food banks and hospitals. And as people were furloughed from work, there was an increase in the number of people who volunteered to help others. It was brilliant. There was this mass outpouring of kindness. But then COVID lasted longer than we first thought. Those 12 weeks we were all promised turned into years and people all got a little bit fed up with the kindness. As a vulnerable family, it was really quite hard to hear those people who had once said, take care, if there's anything you need, just shout. Suddenly being the people who were saying the opposite. You know, it was actually said to us, do you not think that we have all made enough sacrifices for people like you now? The rest of us should be able to do what we want. And before we all roll our eyes at those unkind people from outside the church, those comments came from Christians. We live in a world where kindness is not expected and when it is found, it is certainly not enduring. Now, post-COVID, churches and volunteer organisations of all types all across the country have less volunteers than ever before. The kindness effect has worn off. It's not something that we feel like we have to do anymore. Or we can do the kindness in the worldly sense, we can smile at a stranger, but we're not so good at that enduring, outrageous kindness that David shows us. But what an opportunity that is for us as a church to stand out because of our kindness, to be known as the people who take others by surprise because of our kindness. You know, I think that there are many reasons for why generally the church is in decline, but I genuinely believe that part of that is because we have spent so long trying to fit in with the rest of the world that nobody notices we're there anymore because we're not being different. And here, here is an opportunity for us to be different. Here is an opportunity for us to show kindness to one another and to those people who are out in our communities too. Here is the opportunity for us to kickstart those conversations that we long to have with people because of our kindness because we did something to or for someone that was so unexpected that they said, why would you do that? That we showed them kindness that was so genuinely born out of our relationship with God that they look at us and they say, they've got something that I don't have and I want it. You see, everyone can be a bit kind. Some of the kindest people I know aren't Christians, but I am not talking about the let's be a bit kind. I'm not talking about the chucking a little bit of kindness in someone else's bucket. I'm talking about the fruit of the spirit kindness. I'm talking about kindness that comes from our covenant relationship with God. I'm talking about kindness that the rest of the world doesn't expect. I'm talking about a kindness from God that isn't just add a little bit to the bucket. It fills the bucket to overflowing because I'm talking about the kindness that reflects the kindness that God first showed to us. Because that's the kindness that David shows to Jonathan's son. And that's the kindness that we should be showing if we wanna bear the fruit that we're called to bear. David's grace and kindness to M is a wonderful picture of God's grace to us. Like Jonathan's son, we are poor and we are weak and we are lame and maybe even possibly scared to come before the king. Like him, we are separated from the king because of, our, because of the actions of our ancestors and because of our own deliberate actions when we sin. 
Like him, we are separated ourselves from the king because we did not know him or his love for us. And yet, like David did for Jonathan's son, we have a king who sought us out. We have a king whose kindness is extended to us for the sake of another, Jesus. The king's kindness is extended to us because of the covenant that he offers to us through Jesus. We must receive the king's kindness in humility. But when we do, we have the privilege of a place at the king's table and we are brought into relationship with him. And it is not just for a short while, it is for all of eternity. And so in turn, we must take the kindness that has been poured out on us by God and use it as a pattern for our own service and our own ministry to others. You know, we should be the ones who seek out our enemies and then show kindness to them. We should be the people who look for the poor and the weak and the lame and those that are hidden and show them kindness. We should look um, at those people that we think don't deserve kindness and we should seek to show them even more kindness than they deserve. We should seek not to show kindness because of our own goodness, but because of the goodness and the kindness of God. Because that kind of kindness doesn't come from us being nice, It comes from us being in a covenant relationship with God. And and that that is the only kind of kindness that will make other people stop and wonder. It's, It's the only kind of kindness that will make others look beyond us and our actions and see just the tiniest glimpse of their heavenly king. It's the kindness that comes from God. It's the kindness that we will see bring his kingdom about in this place. Shall we pray together? Oh, Father God, we thank you. We thank you that you are a Lord of unfailing love and kindness. We thank you that we are only here because you first loved us and forgave us. And Lord, we pray, we pray that as your children, as your disciples and heirs to your kingdom, you would help us to show kindness to all that we meet. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to move beyond just being nice and toward reflecting you in the kindness that we show others. And Lord, we acknowledge that showing kindness isn't always easy. And Lord, we pray that you would change our hearts where our hearts need to be changed so that we, that we would see people not as the world sees them, but as you see them so that we might love them more and be able to show them your kindness in our actions and in our attitudes towards others. And Lord, we, we ask that as we seek to follow you, that you would continue to transform us, that as we seek to show kindness to others, help it be in, in ways that point to you that we might bear your image more clearly so that people will come to know you. Father, we, we also want to offer to you our own hearts. Sometimes we find it really difficult to show kindness to others because of the unkindness that has been shown to us. Lord, where there are hurts and wounds that are standing in the way of us bearing the fruit of kindness, We ask, Lord, that you would bring us healing, that you would heal us with your own loving kindness so that we might learn to show grace and kindness to others, just as you have done to us. And Lord, as we do all of this, we do so committing ourselves again to your service and asking you to equip us with all that we need to shine your love and your light to those that we meet. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring 
Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder And show me who you are in your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Sing worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you You lift me from the clay 
We come now into a time of reflective prayer. You might want to pause the video at certain points to spend a bit more time thinking, listening and speaking to our Father. Let's pray. This is your time to pause and rest. Take a deep breath and let yourself slow down. Make space to enjoy God's presence. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. Psalm 22. What does this verse tell you about God's nature? Share with God any praise that comes to mind. From Philippians 4, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. What do you need Jesus to equip you for today? Bring all your worries and concerns to him right now. God, we will give you thanks. We will praise your name as all glory, honour and power are yours. Because our lives are yours, help us to present ourselves as someone who belongs to you, someone who doesn't need to be ashamed. Let our whole lives bring you glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. Lord, we thank you for your presence with us. We pray as we continue into this week that we would go from this place knowing your presence with us continually, strengthening us, giving us peace, and letting that peace overflow into the fruit of the Spirit. Help us to be kind this week and find ways to practice kindness to those around us, sharing your love, sharing your Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's worship the Lord.
Well, that is all we have time for today, but the work of church continues throughout the week. So if you'd like to find out what's going on in church life, all you need to do is drop us an email to office at stmikes.net and we'll send you over our notice sheet. Or you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook where we post regularly on what is happening on in church life. If you'd like prayer for absolutely anything, please feel free to drop us your prayer requests to prayer at stmikes.net or just get in touch and we can organise to have either a Zoom chat with you or a phone call. And we would just love the opportunity to do that. Now, before you go, let me bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. This day and always. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Mm -hmm.